This box is creating a lot of excitement, concern and anxiety in the KDP self publishing world. And in fact, over the last one to two weeks, I've received so many messages about this and requests to do a video on it. So here it is. And it's all about using AI generated content to create your books to publish on Amazon. So we're going to look more closely at what this is, why Amazon or KDP may be collecting this information and how you can proceed going forward. And I'll tell you personally what I'm going to do. So let's have a look. And where do we find this box? Well, it's on the paperback content section of the KDP dashboard where you upload the manuscript and cover for your book. And we've got this box here that says AI generated content. And it briefly tells you what AI generated content is under the definition of KDP and Amazon. So you've got these two options here. Yes, did I use AI generated content or no? Now, if you've written the book yourself, or used images that you may have purchased yourself or created yourself, then you can go ahead and tick no. But if you have used AI generated content, then you would tick yes. Now, what exactly constitutes AI generated content? Well, if you go to the KDP help section under content guidelines and scroll down, you'll find this section here and it tells you what AI generated content is and it tells you also what AI assisted content is. So AI generated content is that content that's been purely created from the start by AI, probably using tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Leonardo.ai and so on. But AI assisted content is that content that you've created originally or you may have purchased originally from a site like Creative Fabrica and edited it using AI. So for example, you may have got an image that you've created or bought, put it onto Photoshop and then you use the AI tools there to edit it. That would be classed as AI assisted content. So if it is AI assisted content that you've created, you would still click the no option. So it's just purely AI generated content. So if you have, click yes. So it gives us these three options here, text, images, and translations. So we've got this drop down box in the text section. Now this is probably not going to apply as much to creators of no content, low content, medium content books, but I know a lot of low content book creators do create kids storybooks. So may use AI to create the stories. So that may apply. So we've got these options here, which are pretty self-explanatory, asking you basically, was it some sections or the whole section created with AI and how much editing was involved? So you would go ahead and pick one of these and then it asks you what tools you used. So now the next section, which is probably more applicable to low content and medium content book creators, especially if you're creating things like coloring books, kids puzzle books and probably book covers for many different types of books. So it asked you, did you create one or a few images or many images? Again, which is pretty easy to decide upon. If it's just something like a cover, you would choose the one or few AI generated images. Then it asks you how much editing you did. Was it no editing, minimal editing or extensive editing? Now KDP or Amazon haven't defined what is minimal or extensive editing, but I'll give you my personal view. Many images that I use, I turn into vectors because then there's no issue with upscaling. They are infinitely scalable. I often adjust the colors. So maybe increase the saturation, increase the vibrancy. I'll often add text to my images. And particularly with coloring book images, I'll do things like remove the shading. And so those are what I would probably consider extensive editing. So. Again, if you choose one of these options, it then asks you what tools did you use? It gives Dali as an example. So here you would put in, you know, again, something like Dali, Midjourney, whatever you used. And then we come to this third section, which is translations. Again, probably doesn't apply to most low content book creators. And it asks you how much work did you translate and how much editing was involved? Now, here's an interesting story which highlights something about the Amazon content guidelines because it says here in the help section you are responsible for verifying that all generated or AI assisted content adheres to all content guidelines. I recently bought a book from Amazon and it was a book on affiliate marketing. Now the reason I bought it was because 
the publisher had used my name as the author. And in fact, there are quite a few books on Amazon that have used my name to publish themselves under, I guess, under the hope that they're going to get more sales due to that fact. But having looked at the books, I don't think that is actually the case. Now, this book that I bought had been translated and it was obvious that no editing had taken place whatsoever. And in fact, a lot of the book was not even readable. And in fact, that book and all the other books created by that creator have now disappeared. So I suspect they got their uh, account terminated because they didn't adhere to the content guidelines. So although you've used AI to create your content, you still need to make sure it's good quality. You still need to make sure you're not doing things like breaching trademark law. And it also says here, a confirm an AI based tool did not create content based on copyrighted work. So if it's written work, then probably you'd want to put it through things like plagiarism checkers to make sure big sections of your content hadn't been taken directly from copyrighted works. Now, with images, it's a bit more difficult because these AI tools like Midjourney use information from billions of images that are out there on the internet. And the way it creates the images, it starts with pixels and builds up the images around those pixels. So it doesn't take specific sections from other images and use those to build up new images with the AI tool. Now, there's one thing that I avoid doing, and that is using the names of artists within the prompts that I use to create the images. If you go to at something like Adobe Stock Images, where you can sell AI generated images, it asks you to say whether it is AI generated and it says you must not use artists names within the prompt uh, that you use to generate that particular image. So I think that's a reasonable rule and it's something that I follow. Now, someone might say, oh, but I could use an artist that died some years ago. Well, again, I think that could be a dodgy area, particularly because some artists that have died, they may still have their trademark and copyright owned by estates or companies that have bought the rights to those works. I like to keep my life simple. I just don't use artist names in my prompts at all. So why might KDP or Amazon be collecting this information? Well, at the moment, they haven't made it clear. They haven't said specifically. And I guess it, at the moment, it's just a data gathering exercise. Now, I have received a lot of messages speculating that they're just collecting this so that it can outright ban all these accounts that have used AI. I personally don't think that's the case. What they may be doing is using this information to put books under more stringent checks when it comes to publishing those books. So, for instance, I know they probably use plagiarism checkers, but they may use more close checks or even manual checks on those books. Same goes for the images. They may go under a manual check to make sure that there's no obvious breach of trademark or copyright rules. It may be that they're going to label books that have used AI to generate the content. Again, using the example of Adobe stock photos, those photos that have been, or images that have been created with AI are labeled as having used AI to create them. So they may be thinking about doing that in the future for AI generated content. Now, from a legal point of view, it is still a bit of a, a gray area. There are no uh, landmark test cases at the moment. And it may be, I think unlikely, that sometime in the future, they may go, you know, in the US, all AI generated content, content cannot be sold on any platform. In which case, Amazon will just remove all that content, all those books that have used AI, rather than just banning those accounts. Now, again, personally, I don't think that will be the case. And I think most likely, nothing will happen at all. Maybe just books will get labeled as having used AI content. Now, how can we proceed going forward? Now, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. This is just my personal opinion. 
And essentially at the end of the day, it's going to come down to your risk tolerance and ability to cope with uncertainty. Now, if you're someone that's gonna use AI, use that to publish your books, and then you're gonna spend all your time worrying, anxious about what's going to happen, then I suggest you don't use it at all. Either create your own content or buy content that's available to use commercially. In terms of risk tolerance, there's going to be a number of factors involved here. One of those is going to be, well, how much are you making from your account? And is it worth risking that income from your account? So for instance, if you're making 10, 20, $50, depending on where you live in the world, you may go, well, that's a small amount and happy to take the risk. If on the other hand, you're making $50,000 a year, you may go, well, that's a huge chunk. I'm not willing to risk my account um, for this. Again, maybe you're making a couple of thousand dollars a month, but all that money is being used to pay for things like your mortgage, car payments, put food on the table for your family. Again, you may be a bit risk averse, and decide just to wait things out and see what happens in the future. All those reasons are completely valid. And when it comes to publishing books on Amazon, I always say, you know, try and look at making money from other platforms. Don't rely on one particular platform run by another business to bring in all your income. Try and diversify as much as you can just to protect yourself. Now, for me personally, I do have a high risk tolerance and I have a good ability to cope with uh, uncertainty. I don't get over overly anxious about these types of things. Maybe because I spent 28 years in a career as a medical doctor where I dealt with a lot of risk and a lot of uncertainty. Also, I know that if all this was to end tomorrow, KDP, you know, disappeared, YouTube disappeared, that I know that I could probably build another business using the skills that I've already learned. And also at the end of the day, if things got really bad, worst came to the worst, I could always go back to my career as a doctor. So personally, myself, I'm happy to use AI to create images for my books, and I'm happy to take that risk going forward but your situation will be different. You've just got to make that assessment yourself, which is important. You know, if you are a, an independent publisher, business owner, this is all part of owning a business. It's all part of, you know, making those decisions around your business. And you've just got to decide and go forward with that decision. And again, I'm sure in the next year, two years, few years, things will become a lot more clear from a legal standpoint. Now, if you are, after all that, interested in creating books using AI, specifically coloring books, then I do have this video here, which is one of my po most popular videos to date on YouTube. So thank you much for your time. It is very much appreciated. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, goodbye.